Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be looking at Tulving's approach of long-term memory, which you need to know for AQA level psychology in the subtopic of memory. I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. Let's get started. Endel Tulving, 1985, proposed the idea that there are three LTM stores, episodic memory, semantic memory, and procedural memory. Episodic memory, knowing when. Explicit, declarative, can be expressed verbally. Memories of personal events and experiences, episodes, in a person's life, autobiographical, e.g. people, places, objects, and behaviors, are all interwoven to produce a single memory. For example, your most recent visit to the dentist, the psychology class you had yesterday, the breakfast you ate this morning, your first day at school, a family holiday etc. requires conscious effort to recall and is not automatic. Time, stamped and linked to an event. Associated with the prefrontal cortex of the brain is linked to the initial coding of episodic memories and consolidation and storage associated with the neocortex. Semantic memories, knowing that. Explicit, declarative, can be expressed verbally. Memories of facts and general knowledge that an individual has learnt. For example, applying to university, the taste of an orange, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, the capital of England is London and the meaning of words. Could also include, how certain objects work, their functions, appropriate behaviour in situations or abstract concepts such as language or mathematics. Requires conscious effort to recall and is not automatic. Not time-stamped or linked to an event. Associated with the frontal and temporal lobes with some psychologists arguing that the hippocampus is involved. Procedural memory, knowing how. Implicit, non-declarative, difficult to explain verbally. Memories of motor skills and actions, muscle memories, usually learnt through repetition and practice. For example, driving a car, knowing how to tie a shoelace, reading, swimming, cycling. Do not require conscious effort to recall and is automatic. Not time-stamped or linked to an event. Associated with the neocortex brain areas within the primary motor cortex, cerebellum and prefrontal cortex. More resistant to forgetting and amnesia. Tulving's approach to long-term memory has several strengths and limitations. A strength of Tulving's approach to LTM is that brain scan studies show that there are different LTM stores. Tulving, 1994, focused on differentiating between two types of long-term memory, episodic memory and semantic memory. He got participants to perform various memory tasks whilst their brains were scanned by a positron emission tomography, PET, neuroimaging technique. He discovered that different areas of the brain are activated when people recall episodic memories compared to when they recall semantic memories. Episodic and semantic memories were in the prefrontal cortex, semantic in left side and episodic in right prefrontal cortex. This is a strength because it suggests that the distinction between episodic and semantic memory is supported by empirical evidence, highlighting the complexity of long-term memory. The activation of different brain areas for these types of memories indicates that they are processed and stored in unique ways, which can lead to a better understanding of how memory functions and the potential for targeted interventions in cases of memory impairment. A strength is of Tulving's approach to LTM is that there is research to suggest that identifying different LTM stores has real-life applications. Belleville et al., 2006, conducted a study on cognitive training in older adults with mild cognitive impairment, MCI, which is a noticeable cognitive decline that isn't severe enough to disrupt daily life and can be a precursor to Alzheimer's disease. The study aimed to evaluate if cognitive training programs could improve memory and cognitive functions in this group. Participants were divided into two groups. One received cognitive training focused on memory, attention, and problem-solving while the control group did not receive any specific training. Researchers assessed cognitive performance using standardized neuropsychological tests before and after the intervention. The results showed that those in the cognitive training group had significant improvements in memory performance compared to the control group, particularly in tasks that utilized strategies taught during the sessions. Moreover, the study indicated that cognitive training could lead to lasting benefits, 
with some improvements still noticeable several months after the intervention. This is a strength because it suggests that cognitive training can effectively enhance memory functions in older adults, providing practical benefits for those with mild cognitive impairment. The findings indicate that targeted interventions can lead to significant improvements, which has important implications for developing strategies to support cognitive health in aging populations. A strength of Tulving's approach to LTM is that there is case study evidence to support episodic memory. Patient HM, Henry Molazen, underwent a surgical procedure in 1953 to treat severe epilepsy. The surgery involved the removal of parts of his medial temporal lobes, including the hippocampus. While the surgery successfully reduced his seizures, it resulted in profound memory deficits. HM suffered from anterograde amnesia, where he was unable to form new LTMs. He could remember events from his early life but struggled to retain new information for more than a few minutes. For example, he could have a conversation but would forget it shortly after it ended. He also had retrograde amnesia, where he had difficulty recalling events that occurred in the years immediately before his surgery. However, his memories from childhood and early adulthood remained largely intact and HM's STM was relatively unaffected. He could hold information for a short period, but it would not transfer to LTM. For instance, he could repeat a phone number immediately after hearing it but would forget it within minutes. HM's procedural memory also remained intact. He could learn new tasks, such as mirror drawing, and improve with practice, even though he had no conscious memory of performing the tasks before. This is a strength because it suggests that there are distinct memory systems in the brain, particularly separating episodic memory from procedural memory. HM's ability to learn new tasks despite his anterograde amnesia indicates that procedural memory operates independently of episodic memory, reinforcing the idea that different types of long-term memory are stored and processed in different ways. A strength of Tulving's approach to LTM is that there is case study evidence to support there being three different types of LTM. Clive Waring, who suffered from a severe case of herpes simplex encephalitis in 1985. This viral infection caused extensive damage to his hippocampus and other areas of his brain, leading to anterograde amnesia, where Clive is unable to form new memories. He lives in a continuous loop of 7 to 30 seconds of awareness, constantly feeling as though he has just woken up. This means he cannot remember events that have just happened, making it impossible for him to retain new information. He also has retrograde amnesia, where Clive lost many of his past memories. He could not recall much of his life before the illness, including significant personal events. However, some aspects of his previous life, such as his love for his wife Deborah, remain intact. Despite his severe amnesia, Clive's procedural memory, which involves the memory of how to perform tasks and skills, remains largely unaffected. He can still play the piano and conduct a choir with the same skill as before his illness. This suggests that procedural memory is stored in different brain regions than those affected by his encephalitis. Clive also retains strong emotional responses, particularly towards his wife. Every time he sees her, he greets her with overwhelming joy, as if he hasn't seen her in years, even if she just left the room a few minutes ago. This indicates that emotional memory can be somewhat independent of other types of memory. This is a strength because it suggests that different types of long-term memory are processed in distinct areas of the brain, which can function independently of one another. Clive Waring's case illustrates this well, as his procedural memory remains intact despite his severe amnesia, supporting the idea that memory systems are separate. A strength of Tulving's approach of LTM is that there is case study evidence to support there being at least two different types of LTM. Vicoria et al., 2007, conducted a case study on a young girl known as CL, who suffered from developmental amnesia due to damage to the hippocampus after the removal of a tumor. Despite CL having deficiencies in her ability to create new episodic memories, CL demonstrated a relatively intact ability to learn new semantic information. This is a strength because it suggests that the different types of long-term memory operate independently of one another. The case of CL demonstrates that even with impairments in episodic memory, the ability to acquire and retain semantic knowledge remains intact. This supports the idea that episodic and semantic memories are distinct systems, 
which aligns with Tolving's theory of multiple memory stores. A limitation of Tolving's approach to LTM is that there is research to suggest that there may only be two types of LTM. Cohen and Squire, 1980, argued that episodic and semantic memories are stored together in one LTM store called declarative memory, memories that can be consciously recalled, and agree procedural memories are a distinctly different kind of memory to semantic episodic called non-declarative, memories that cannot be consciously recalled. Cohen and Squire used various experimental paradigms to investigate these different types of memory. One notable experiment involved tasks that tested subjects' ability to recall facts, declarative memory, versus their ability to perform tasks without conscious recall, non-declarative memory. Their research demonstrated that these two types of memory are supported by different neural systems. Declarative memory relies heavily on the medial temporal lobe, including the hippocampus, while non-declarative memory involves other brain regions such as the basal ganglia and cerebellum. This is a limitation because it suggests that Tolving's classification of long-term memory may be too simplistic, as it does not adequately represent the evidence provided by Cohen and Squire that episodic and semantic memories are interrelated within a single declarative memory system. Their research underscores the need for a more comprehensive understanding of how these memory types function and interact within the brain. A limitation of Tolving's approach to LTM is that it takes a reductionist approach. Schachter et al., 1987, proposed four different types of LTM. Semantic memory is the memory for this is the memory for facts and general knowledge about the world, episodic memory which recall personal experiences and specific events that have occurred in one's life, procedural memory which stores information on how to perform tasks and actions and perceptual representation systems, PRS, which is memory related to the recognition of specific stimuli e.g. faces and objects. This is a limitation because it suggests that Tolving's approach may overlook the complexity of long-term memory by reducing it to just a few categories. Schachter et al.'s proposal of four distinct types of LTM indicates that there are additional nuances in how memories are categorized and processed, which Tolving's model may not adequately address. This reductionist view could lead to an incomplete understanding of memory functions and their interrelations. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye.